Uh, and then I'm curious, the, the Big Ten picture, first of all, it's changed so much, but that was because of mostly all of us making guesses uh, on teams because we didn't truly know uh, what, what everybody was going to be like. But Purdue still looks to be the class of the Big Ten, but there's no true great team. I don't Purdue. I don't consider Purdue great um, because they're absolutely beatable, and there's just doesn't seem to be that team that really. Uh, although Purdue stands out more than the others, but not. I, I know that it's hard to say that even though they were ranked number one for the last few weeks, they just don't. I don't see them winning a national championship. Yeah, I, one thing I'd say, Jim, is that uh, I, I spoke on Saturday. I, I, I looked at the league standings, and I um, noticed that every single team in the league, all 14 teams in the Big Ten, had a loss. And I think no one at that point had more than three wins. So you're basically four games into the Big Ten season, and everybody has a loss. So Harold Shelton, the uh, elite researcher at Big Ten Network, I I immediately emailed him and said, have we ever had, this? like, is, is this a record or, you know? And so, I, I, you know, is it a dumb question to ask? And he said, no, it's not because we just looked that up and it's been, at, we, we, we've covered 20 years and we haven't found uh, a circumstance where everybody in the league had a loss that early. So in at least 20 years, this is, you, one could say this is, this appears to be the most balanced Big Ten that you would have everybody in the league with a loss after after essentially four or five games. Uh, so it is, it, it's, I, I do think that Purdue is outstanding. And, you know, I mean, they've only lost one game to date in any competition and they've played, uh, they played uh, Duke, et cetera. Uh, so they've played good opposition, Gonzaga they beat. Um, and then of course the, solid teams, high quality teams they've beat in the big they've beaten in the Big Ten as well. Uh, so I, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this league race develops without a doubt. And if you're Indiana and you're searching for everything at the moment, you can know that even though you're struggling, you're not out of contact with the leaders in the league. So if you can get it turned, uh, you know, perhaps you can, you know, you can recover back to the level that you had had aspired to earlier in the year. I'm going to tell you on the SEC side, uh, this kid Brandon Miller is pretty special. Oh. 19 and eight and a half rebounds a game. Nate Oates is a pretty good coach. I mean, you're talking about a Final Four team. Maybe this is finally the year that Alabama breaks through because they look real, and, and they just took it to Kentucky the other day. They look really darn good. And, and they're a team that's going to be, I think, laying in the weeds. Um, and I saw UConn play in person. I was very impressed with you know what Danny Hurley's doing. I mean, I, I like I like what they're doing as well. So those are a couple of teams that I kind of look at right now early. At, and I disagree with you on Purdue, Jim. I just think the way Edie's playing right now. Oh, he's I think, tough. you know, I think this could be Matt Painter's year. And Braden Smith has been obviously better than advertised. And, you know, it's kind of ironic oh. that Indiana went out to get Hood Shafino and, and Braden Smith is playing as well at the, as well at the point. You know, I mean, he's, he's playing great. He was, I, I was... And it would have crawled to Bloomington to play at IU. I, I um, was looking, you know, as 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 Braden, we had the uh, Purdue Penn State game on Big Ten Network on Sunday evening, uh, right before Big Ten basketball and beyond. So I was looking up. Okay, so what was Braden Smith recruited? You know, what was he rated coming out of high school? I, I believe it was 196th, and he was the 33rd point guard. In, in in the class of 22, 33rd. There's 32 guys out there better than him. Uh, that's what, look, I, I'm not criticizing the recruiting analysts uh, because I know a lot of them. And uh, But, I mean, that, that, every now and then one sneaks through the cracks, and that was Braden. I, I, I don't think anybody other than Matt Painter uh, realized what he was getting. Because if you look as well, not just, you know, it wasn't just uh, – Indiana. I mean, if you look at his recruiting profile on 24-7 sports, it was, I think it was Montana, somebody out west, like Montana or Wyoming. There was Toledo. Um, you know, it, there wasn't, 
there wasn't a great push for Braden Smith. And, you know, you look at Braden, I mean, he's only like 5'11". He's not super big. Uh, but, man, he can ball. I mean, he is a tremendous college basketball player only 15 games into his season. He goes <laughs> into Ohio State and dominates, uh, you know, has the key uh, inter interception, so to speak, or intervention, knocking the ball away. Uh, from Bryce Sensabaugh on the final play for Ohio State. Then he goes into the Palestra, the two road games in a row against uh, Big Ten contenders, and he's one of the three best players on the floor as a freshman who was rated 196. That's just astounding. The Fletcher Purdue, Lawyer is not, not, a bad, not a bad guy. Too. Well, I was going to say, between <laughs> Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith, they have been freshmen of the week in the Big Ten a total of five times. Yeah. That's, and, and, you know, Brayden, that was in, and, and, and that was in like play, the first seven weeks, I think. Brayden didn't play in the Indiana All Star game. I mean, I, he had some leg issue, right? so I was thinking going into the season, all right, they're going to move him along slowly because he has a leg issue or whatever. And and here he is, you know, playing great. And and uh, Fletcher Lawyer was Fletcher Lawyer even an Indiana All Star? No, I don't remember seeing him in that game, or was he? Or I'd have to go back and look. I don't remember yeah. uh, exactly who was all on the roster, but uh, getting back to the the Big Ten, Mike, um, Indiana, one of the teams that was considered a favorite. Now we have to look at the fact that they have not finished higher than ninth in the last six years, and wondering are they going to be able to break that streak this year with where they are right now, how the team is trending. Uh, injuries aside, the defense had taken a, a step down and was going down. Then the injuries hit. It got worse. They don't seem to have an offensive identity, although you have two great players in Trace and, and Jalen Huchifino. We saw that that's, that that can't carry you uh, even against a mediocre team like uh, uh, Northwestern. Well, I, I think, first of all, I think that – they lost the two most important components of their defense, which has been devastating. And, and I don't think that the reaction of uh, that, the, that the initial reaction of the coaching staff to get small uh, rather than insert Malik Renew into the starting lineup. They went with, you know, they went with a smaller group and that and that really. Uh, they really struggled defensively. Uh, Geronimo, uh, in particular, on the defensive end, has really struggled. And I, I so when 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 race went out, I didn't think getting sm you know I didn't think getting small worked well against Iowa, and then they came back with it against Northwestern. It, that I, that was a, a decision that puzzled me, uh, and ultimately they went in that direction. But by then the game had kind of been established. I mean they were trying to dig themselves out of a hole. That was established by Northwestern very early, uh, so eventually they got pretty good play out of Renew, and he played I think 24, 25 minutes on Sunday. Uh, but again, they 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 were they were never able to dig themselves out of the hole that happened because of the decision to go smaller early. Uh, that I think that hurt them, and uh, the 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 offensive identity thing. You know, it's hard to say. Okay, well, we were going to be a multi point guard look two elite point guards, two elite college point guards out front. And, you know, and what that causes to defenses, what the problems that causes for defenses, uh, you know, we'll, we, they'll have to cope with that. And they did for six games or whatever it was before Jalen got hurt. Uh, or they, they failed to do that until Jalen got hurt. And then all of a sudden, Indiana has to invent a new offensive identity. That's not easy to do. Uh, at, and, you know the the one problem with making that their look, and I don't, I'm not arguing with making that their look because clearly Xavier Johnson and Jalen Huchifino were two of their three or four best players. So you have to play those guys together. That's what you design. But the problem is if you don't have one of those guys available, and they have missed both of them basically since the second third week in November, um, they've, they've been without one or the other. If you don't have one or the other, then you have to find a new identity. And I thought that coming out of uh, you know the the uh, the the injury, you know the Christmas break, that they had enough time to establish a new identity. And what's lost is that they did. They were crushing Iowa over the course of the first half of that game until Race got hurt. They were destroying Iowa on the road in a you know in a game Iowa needed as a get well game. But 
when race got hurt, then they had to reinvent themselves on defense and they just couldn't do both at once. So I have sympathy for IU, but unfortunately athletics doesn't, you know, it doesn't really ac uh, accommodate much sympathy. I mean, because, oh, well, too bad. Now you got to go play Northwestern and they're the third best defensive team in the country. And now you got to go play whoever's next. I haven't looked at the schedule. There's, there's just no breaks. So you have to figure it out. Um, but I would, I would be surprised if Indiana came out in their next game with a small lineup. And if they did, I think that sympathy would start to dissipate because you're making a choice at that point. You're making a choice to go with what clearly didn't work in the second half versus Iowa, first half uh, versus, uh, versus Northwestern. 